What up, YouTube? Here with a post-fight video of the Shakur Stevenson versus Edwin De Los Santos fight. Now, before I give you out a summary of what happened in the fight, I'm going to tell you out the results first. Shakur Stevenson won the vacant WBC lightweight title via unanimous decision. I had the fight score 118 to 110 in favor of Shakur Stevenson. Now, the fight was less than mediocre i would say it was quite boring it wasn't the best performance on the side of shakur stevenson it definitely wasn't the type of performance that shakur stevenson wanted to capture the wbc lightweight title which is his first title win in his ongoing undefeated career that is very promising and he was a unified super featherweight champion prior to moving up to lightweight. He had his debut fight versus Yoshino, his debut fight at lightweight. And that fight was a much better performance than his fight versus Edwin De Los Santos, where he won his first lightweight title since moving up from super featherweight to lightweight and his debut performance was a much better performance than his championship victory performance versus Edwin De Los Santos. Now, would I rank Yoshino at the same level as De Los Santos? They're both amongst the top 10 lightweights in the world right now when it comes to the title organization's rankings. However, Shakur Stevenson, I would say, were more focused on Shakur Stevenson and his ability to perform and entertain his fans because of his reputation and as well as how brilliant Shakur Stevenson has been performing, especially in his latest bouts. You look at his fight versus names like Oscar Valdez, he dominated Valdez, and his fight versus Jamel Herring, he dominated Jamel Herring as well. And I would say fighters like those two guys who Shakur Stevenson has stepped in the ring to have a title fight against and the way he performed versus names like a Valdez and a Herring, we expect a much more dominating performance from Shakur Stevenson versus lesser caliber opponents like a Edwin De Los Santos. And I mean that with all due respect to Edwin De Los Santos. I'm guessing that people was expecting Shakur Stevenson to put on a beating on Edwin De Los Santos like he did versus Yoshino in his debut fight at lightweight for his first title fight at lightweight and to continue his momentum that he's been creating as a late. This fight reminded me of Shakur Stevenson's performance versus Nakathila before he became a champion at Super Featherweight. And that fight, people was criticizing Shakur Stevenson's ability to entertain fans. And people was saying Shakur Stevenson doesn't have the style to draw fans to want to attend his fights. And that wasn't until he fought Jamel Herring where people were saying, yeah, we could get behind this guy and support him and his career if he continues to beat out his opponents like this, especially when it comes to fights of title magnitudes. And Edwin De Los Santos, experience-wise, He's never fought 12 rounds before. He's never fought in a championship match before this fight. And this fight did go to distance. 
So Edwin De Los Santos, for the first time in his pro boxing career, went all 12 rounds. And Edwin De Los Santos, this is why I put him on the same level as a Yoshino, despite the fact that they're both amongst the top 10 or 15 contenders when it comes to title organizations, as I have mentioned before. Edwin De Los Santos was on a three-fight win streak before getting to step in the ring versus Shakur Stevenson for the vacant WBC lightweight title. He lost a fight versus William Foster the third via a split decision. That fight was at super featherweight and... After that fight, Edwin De Los Santos moved up to lightweight and he hasn't lost a fight since that fight versus William Foster III. And William Foster III isn't amongst the top 10 ranked contenders by any of the title organizations at super featherweight. And Shakur Stevenson fought Edwin De Los Santos who doesn't have as much experience as a Oscar Valdez, Jamel Herring, or a Robson Canseco. And this fight, I would say, and I mean this with all due respect, wasn't a title caliber of a fight. Now, if Shakur Stevenson was to fight a name like a Javante Davis, who is considered to be one of the best, if not the best, lightweight. And Gervonta Davis is currently the WBA lightweight champion as well. However, promotional-wise, that fight between Shakur Stevenson and Gervonta Davis would be somewhat difficult to make happen because Gervonta Davis is with PBC and Shakur Stevenson is with top rank. Another fight that would be considered a high caliber of a fight that would be deemed as a title worthy fight would be a fight between Shakur Stevenson and Vasily Lomachenko. And that fight would be much easier to make happen than a Davis versus Stevenson because both. Shakur Stevenson and Vasily Lomachenko is promoted by top rank. And that fight has been rumored to happen in the future. And with the vacancy currently right now amongst the lightweights, ever since Devin Haney decided to vacate all the titles at lightweight, Devin Haney being a former undisputed lightweight champion who decided to step up to super lightweight and he had a successful debut fight at super lightweight becoming the new WBC super lightweight champion in this fight versus Regis Pograss. Now I'm going to talk about that fight in another video. I'm going to make a whole post fight video to that fight and As I was saying, though, that's why there is room amongst the top lightweights right now to compete for the titles at lightweight. Hence why the WBA crowned Javante Davis as their champion and Shakur Stevenson for Edwin De Los Santos for the vacant WBC lightweight championship. And then it's rumored, well... I've heard that they've came to terms to agree for a vacant IBF lightweight title fight between Vasily Lomachenko and George Gambosis. And they're supposed to fight for the vacant IBF lightweight title next year. And both Lomachenko and Gambosis has been former unified lightweight champions in the past and 
fighters of their notoriety fighting each other for one of the titles at lightweights is a good look for the division and for the sport as well. And the winner of that fight could possibly fight Shakur Stevenson for a unification title bout for both the WBC and IBF lightweight titles and as well as for the vacant WBO lightweight title because the WBO has not crowned a new champion at lightweight. And if you go look at the rankings of the WBO right now, the WBO has both Shakur Stevenson and Vasily Lomachenko ranked as the top two contenders when it comes to their rankings at lightweight and their organization. And that fight is the biggest fight to make happen, at least from my perspective, that the lightweight division can produce right now. And that's if Vasily Lomachenko can get past George Gambosis in their rumor bout next year. And Vasily Lomachenko, I would say, is the favorite to win that fight versus George Gambosis. And George Gambosis, you look at his bounce back performance fight versus Maxi Hughes after suffering that back to back loss versus Devin Haney in their undisputed lightweight title bout. That fight and that victory that George Gambosis got over on Maxi Hughes was a questionable one because I personally had thought that Maxi Hughes should have won the fight. It was competitive, however, as I said, from my perspective, I thought Maxi Hughes should have got the decision versus George Gambosis. Now, in the meantime, while Shakur Stevenson waits to have yet another marquee fight versus a more known opponent than a Yoshino or a Edwin De Los Santos. If he wants to stay active, then he could fight a name like a Maxi Hughes. He's not amongst the top 10 lightweights. Matter of fact, I think he is. He's somewhere there amongst the top 10, the top 15 lightweights ranked by the WBC. If as I said, Shakur Stevenson and his team wants to keep Shakur Stevenson active and busy, then he could fight a guy like Maxi Hughes and it would be a good look for Hughes to have a redemption fight versus arguably the best lightweight in boxing right now, that being Shakur Stevenson. And that would be a good look for both Shakur Stevenson and Maxi Hughes. Now, of course, there is other fights out there that Shakur Stevenson can have while waiting for, as I said, a better fight to have him go against a better opponent in the ring with in the future. As I said, it's not necessary. However, it would be a good look for Shakur Stevenson and a fighter that fights at his level to be active and to keep his name surfacing amongst the elites in the sport of boxing. And especially after a lackluster performance like this one, because there is a lot of fans that's questioning Shakur Stevenson and his ability to perform at a top championship level at lightweight after this fight versus Edwin De Los Santos. Now, from my personal opinion, I would say it's unfair because everybody has off days. And this is boxing. Like any other sport, A f athlete or a fighter in this case can have poor performances just because he's one of the best fighters in all of the sport of boxing. It doesn't mean that Shakur Stevenson cannot have a bad day. And Shakur Stevenson, he's facing a lot of criticism from boxing enthusiasts because he didn't put on the performance like he did in the past when fighting top level opponents for a title versus a less experienced, more green 
and lesser known opponent like a Edwin De Los Santos and him putting on, I would say, more of a boring fight than a disappointing fight, that seems more like selfishness coming from these boxing fans that's criticizing Shakur Stevenson for his performance versus Edwin De Los Santos because based on my scorecards, I had this fight scored more in favor of Shakur Stevenson than the actual judges did because the official judges that were scoring the actual fight had this fight score closer than how I had it. I had this fight score 118 to 110 as I had told you at the start of this post-fight video. The judges that was actually officiating and scoring this bout had this fight score. One of them had a score 115 to 113 while the other two had a score 116 to 112. Now, I don't see how they could have had so many rounds scored in favor of Edwin De Los Santos because Edwin De Los Santos did not step on the gas pedal till the championship rounds. Now, I don't know if that came from Edwin De Los Santos having not enough experience and him never having a championship full 12 round fight prior to this fight and him saving up enough stamina for him to last all 12 rounds. As I said, he was hesitant. He was throwing with no intention. And that's why Edwin De Los Santos was missing a lot of his shots that he was throwing against Shakur Stevenson in this fight. And on Shakur Stevenson's part, where I could see criticism coming from based on his performance versus Edwin De Los Santos in this fight is his lack of ability at capitalizing off of Edwin De Los Santos mistakes and Edwin De Los Santos made more than a few mistakes in this fight. As I have mentioned, he threw shots without any intentions. He threw wasteful punches towards Shakur Stevenson where a sharp elite fighter like Shakur Stevenson who's got good counter punching ability could have capitalized off of those mistakes and those missed shots from Edwin De Los Santos and Shakur Stevenson didn't step on the gas pedal like we're used to seeing Shakur Stevenson step on the gas pedal in his prior performances versus more notable opponents that have fought more than Edwin De Los Santos and had more of a reputation than Edwin De Los Santos and were used to seeing Shakur Stevenson take full advantage of technical errors shown by his opponents and Shakur Stevenson whenever his opponents give him room to capitalize off of their mistakes, Shakur Stevenson usually tends to make his opponents pay a big cost with his speed, with his accuracy, with his precision, with his combinations, and his sharpness, and his athleticism, and his mobility. And we didn't see that attribute displayed in this fight from Shakur Stevenson. And Shakur Stevenson, he does a good job at capitalizing off of the range reading mistakes that his opponents make. Now, this is, I wouldn't want to call it excuse. However, Edwin De Los Santos, this this credit has to go to Edwin De Los Santos because of his athleticism and his agility and his ability to keep himself off of the line, which is a good skill that Shakur Stevenson also possesses. And that could have been a difficult part for Shakur Stevenson to have him more hesitant than we're used to seeing them. And that's why it looked more like a chess match than a boxing match in this fight. And 
the commentary team had mentioned that Shakur Stevenson's left hand and Shakur Stevenson being a southpaw fighter, Shakur Stevenson's dominant hand being the left hand, he didn't throw with his left hand a lot in this fight because they had said that Shakur Stevenson's left hand looked as swollen a few days prior to this fight happening and that could have been the reason why Shakur Stevenson only stuck to the jab mostly in this fight and that jab was the key to Shakur Stevenson's victory because he put that out there and it was accurate, it was sharp, it was peppering and it kept Edwin De Los Santos at bay and that's what kept Shakur Stevenson from throwing combinations and utilizing his power hand in this fight versus Edwin De Los Santos. And that goes to show that Shakur Stevenson is a very highly skilled fighter because even with a handicap like a swollen left hand, he can still get a clean victory in a championship fight with just a jab and using mostly his lead hand to secure a win. And Shakur Stevenson didn't make any excuses about his left hand being injured. Him and his team didn't mention anything about his left hand and the details to his injuries. Now, I didn't see any media reports of Shakur Stevenson's left hand being significantly hurt. And that's why Shakur Stevenson and his camp didn't mention anything about his left hand being a handicap in this fight versus Edwin De Los Santos. The only criticism that Shakur Stevenson's Face was the fact that this fight was boring and Shakur Stevenson was backpedaling and he was maneuvering more than throwing. And you look at Shakur Stevenson's fights, Shakur Stevenson, he tends to move around a lot. He has the agility of maneuvering and that's what makes him a top level fighter because his ability to be able to move around a lot and frequently the way he does versus his opponents with his foot speed and his athleticism creating different angles and his ability to dictate the pace and have the ring generalship skills being displayed whenever he fights. And that's why I'm not getting a lot of these criticisms that Shakur Stevenson is facing. I don't see the technical and the fundamental and boxing related criticism that Shakur Stevenson is facing. If they want to say this fight was boring and that's all they're complaining about, then it would make sense. However, there is, as I said, no real skill-related criticism that should be shunned at Shakur Stevenson for his fight versus Edwin De Los Santos. And you look at the championship rounds when Edwin De Los Santos started to step on the gas pedal and show signs of desperateness, Shakur Stevenson was able to answer the turn-up that Edwin De Los Santos was putting on towards him. Because Shakur Stevenson answered back with counter punches and his good defense at making his opponents miss, despite the fact that his opponent that's in front of him is trying to bring a lot of pressure. And yet, Shakur Stevenson is able to keep calm and have the skills that he has, and that's to maneuver and display his athleticism and his head movement, upper body movement, and his footwork skills to avoid all these shots, and as well as his sharp, intuitive counter-punching skills because he was throwing combinations back and landing them as well. And 
that's why Shakur Stevenson and the criticism that he's facing, as I said, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And Shakur Stevenson, it looked like he wanted to take it easy in this fight, and he did. And it was an easy day at the office with Shakur Stevenson. Now, if I was a fighter, I can understand to want to put on a good entertaining performance for the fans' sake. However, the goal is to get a win and leave out with taking as least amount of punishment as possible and... That's what I saw from this fight with Shakur Stevenson and Edwin De Los Santos. And as I have said before, the next best fight for Shakur Stevenson to have next is to fight the winner of Vasily Lomachenko and George Gambosis. And I heard rumors that next year that Shakur Stevenson can be facing Jermaine Ortiz for the WBC lightweight title. And now Jermaine Ortiz, he as well is a top 10 ranked contender amongst the lightweights. Now that fight would be a good fight, at least speaking from paper-wise. And if Shakur Stevenson wants to regain his fans' favoritism, then that fight would be a good look for a bounce-back performance and a more intriguing bout that has been rumored for a while now is a fight between Shakur Stevenson and Frank Martin. Now, they was close to coming to terms to make that fight happen. However, I don't know the details when it comes to the contract for that fight to possibly happen. Now, I don't know if it was Shakur Stevenson in his camp that denied the offer or if it was Frank Martin in his camp that wasn't satisfied with how the terms was looking for that fight to happen. Now, that fight is still in the air to happen possibly in the future. Now, that would also be an intriguing bout that can happen in the future for the lightweight title. Now, is it as a intriguing bout as a fight versus Vasily Lomachenko? From my opinion, I say no. And majority fans w- would also say the same thing. And the fight that would be of the biggest magnitude would be a fight with either Javante Davis or Devin Haney. Now, Devin Haney did say before moving up to super lightweight, the only reason why he was sticking around at lightweight was for that potential undisputed mega lightweight title bout versus Shakur Stevenson that everybody wanted to see versus... Dumb to Shakur Stevenson and Devin Haney. Now, it looked like they was teasing that fight that everybody wanted to see happen. And they couldn't come to an agreement because I heard... Was it Shakur Stevenson? Yeah, it was Shakur Stevenson and his camp didn't like the offer that was presented to them, number-wise speaking for that fight between him and Devin Haney to happen. And that's why Devin Haney decided to go on the zone again and move up to super lightweight to fight Regis Progress for the WBC super lightweight title and vacate all his titles at lightweight. And that fight still has possibilities of happening. And if or when that fight does happen... Everybody is going to look forward to it. And another fight that would be a humongous fight would be a fight with Shakur Stevenson and Gervonta Davis. And that fight has 
potential of happening as well, despite the fact that I had mentioned earlier with promotional differences that these two fighters have, and both fighters are still competing at lightweight, and that fight would also, as I said, be of a huge magnitude, and I would say is even a bigger fight than a fight with Shakur Stevenson and Vasily Lomachenko, especially in America, because both fighters being of American origins, and that fight I would like to see as well, and that would be a mega fight, as is the fight with Shakur Stevenson and Vasily Lomachenko. As I said, those two fights that seem like more of a difficult fight to make happen with either Devin Haney or Javante Davis, that is a fight that all fans would like to see. And that does it for this post-fight video. Y'all let me know what y'all opinions are from this fight that y'all saw with Shakur Stevenson and Edwin De Los Santos. What would you like to see next happen in the lightweight division? And comment y'all opinions. And if y'all got a channel of y'all own and y'all made a video regarding to this subject that I had covered, I would be, I'll, 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 I'll give it a watch and subscribe to this channel because we speaking about channels anyways and like this video share the content and click the links in the description as well to show you guys the support for this channel anything will be appreciated and i'm out of here y'all peace